Hey, good afternoon everybody and welcome back to the channel. It's got a beautiful Aloha Friday going on today. Very nice solar coming in. A few nice clouds rolling by, only blocking the panels intermittently. Beautiful trade winds blowing. So, perfect day. Aloha Friday, time for a video. So over the past few days in preparation for uh, getting this inverter hardwired, which it now is hardwired, uh, and setting up a, a breaker box to run some outlets throughout the house, uh, all of that's been going pretty good. While it was disconnected, stuck another uh, 200 amp fuse between the hot bus bar and the hot inverter side just to have a little extra fusing protection got a, a 200 amp fuse off the battery as well which we covered in an earlier video so had to take the the inverter off the wall and shut everything down to get the ground wire which is on the underneath side so the only way to reach that was to pull it off and stick that ground wire which still needs to be firmly attached, but we got it up and running now. Got a lot of wires to kind of run into a little bit better. One of the things that was a little difficult is, you know, trying to get what you can done in a day and still be up and running in the evening. So uh, that makes it a little challenging, but I'm going to give you a close up on that hard wire here. So right here you can see uh, on the Reliable 3000, the, the red is hot, the black is neutral, and the yellow is ground. Uh, it, it all went together just fine. Those screws and plates to cinch that wire in, which is 12 gauge. Uh, they could be a little beefier, I believe, but they do uh, cinch down nice and tight, so it's working just fine. Pretty happy about that. And there's a close up with a stuck another 200 amp fuse on the one which complements uh, this one right here, another 200 amp fuse. And it's still a little bit of a debris field down here. We've got the, <clears throat> the ground, all the grounding coming together nicely. And this, like I said, you know, the, the ground for this inverter is on the underneath side. It's got kind of a cheesy screw down there uh, to attach the ground wire. Really, that one could definitely be improved upon. I hope they're listening about that. It needs a, you know, a, definitely a more ability to cinch down the, the ground for the chassis on the inverter. And here we've got the one, two, three, four, five lines and outlets run out so far and everything's looking good. We've got an outlet back here in the utility room. Another one out in the living quarters. And a couple more of these scattered around the, the house at the moment. <clears throat> so it continues to be a work in progress and it's growing uh, a little bit every day. And, like I said, and still running at night. So I just try to pace myself to what I can get done in a day and still have it hooked up and running. So I want to talk a little bit about the grounding issues that I'm running up against out here. Of course, uh, we're living on a volcano, so there's nothing but uh, solid lava rock under, uh, if you're lucky, one or two inches of soil. So I've got this eight foot rod driven in kind of horizontally with the best purchase I could get in, which of course is not very deep and it has not uh, given me a, a good correct grounding read yet. And so this is kind of what I'm up against. Even if the ground is disturbed anywhere, all you're really left with is solid lava rock anywhere you try to to uh, knock a ground rod into is met with tons of resistance and lava is not even the the best uh, grounding 
And like I said, this is an, uh, a part of the ground that has been disturbed and it leaves a lot of these, you know, rocks like this. So it's been suggested to me uh, to uh, take, take a rod and knock it down by a big tree root that's busted up this stuff and see if you can get a good purchase, drive it down as deep as you can. I know some people that have had some success doing that. So right here is a massive uh, mango tree. This thing is absolutely huge. And what you can see is if I follow it down to its roots, this is one root here, and there's my foot on top of it, so you can see it's it's quite large. And we can assume that that has busted up the ground pretty good in all directions around here. So someone that has done a similar type of grounding for their system said to, you know, knock a ground rod in here wherever you can get a purchase. And if you can get several feet, it's usually adequate. The other thing people are doing out here is digging like a two and a half foot to three foot deep trench uh, for the entire length of the rod, laying it in horizontally, and then covering it back up. Uh, you'd probably have to bring in some good soil because just covering up with lava rock is not going to give you that uh, right resistance, um, I believe is what they call it under there. So, um, you know, I tried to do that here by just driving that thing. I got a little purchase and I was able to drive that eight foot rod at a slight downward angle underneath, busted up some rock, but alas, uh, it was not good enough. Um, so that's where I'm gonna be heading out to that tree and try another rod uh, down along that tree. So it's always amazing to me that these great big trees uh, they're definitely anchored down and their root system crawls along the top of the ground and definitely busts up that lava pretty good. So uh, that one big mango tree I was talking about has definitely uh, gone down quite a ways. I will probably be able to get that done that way. But one of the things I'm curious about what uh, some of you might have done if you encountered some really uh, rough rocky soil to get a ground in, looking for other suggestions. I think I've got it figured out, but I don't want to uh, lose too many ground rods in this uh, experiment. So back in the utility room, uh, things are just looking good. Got some wires to tighten up, but uh, once I get that grounding issue resolved, gonna be getting close to wrapping this thing up. I'm just gonna put another uh, move my charge controller, move some wires around, make it look really nice. Uh, but I'm up and running, which is good. Really having a lot of fun with this uh, project and learning a whole bunch. Uh, I didn't expect the grounding to be uh, the issue it's turning into, but I think I've got some good suggestions on uh, how to proceed, and then I should be done with that and have everything grounded. I'm gonna have, I mean, I've got all the ground wires off of everything that need to be. It's just a matter of getting a good ground reading. So really curious to what you guys might suggest in this kind of a soil. Yeah, I can get it, uh, someone to come out here and, and drill one down. They want about 600 bucks. So yeah, we're gonna go with a, a different method and, uh, long time before I spend 600 bucks on driving a ground rod. The trench method I know works for some people and then also that driving at home alongside of a big tree that's made its way down through that lava. So it's an issue out here. A lot of people have been talking about it. I visited some forums, but uh, I'll see what you guys have to say before I uh, risk another rod in case there's something that you might mention that has not been mentioned to me so far. So anyway, really happy with everything, working good. The reliable, hardwired, working, working very well. All the, all the components that I'm trying to run, running just fine. Extra fuse, pretty happy. 
So I just want to thank you all again for all the help that you've uh, sent my way. It's been a lot of fun, and I'm looking forward to hearing what uh, you guys might think about some of those grounding issues. Anyway, hope you all have a, a great weekend. Hope it's beautiful where you are. And, hey, happy Thanksgiving for everybody for next week. All right, thanks again, guys. Really appreciate you all. And aloha.